How's it going everyone? As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. This is Deck Ready, my channel all about the Steam Deck. I do two types of videos on this channel. This one is a news update, which is basically like a video podcast. I do it around three times a week where I go through all the latest Steam Deck news. And then the other types of videos are like tips, tricks, and guides, single topic videos, anything that I can think of related to the Steam Deck that's not really news related. So if you want to get in on the ground floor before everything in the world of Steam Deck blows up, make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications set to all. In today's video I've got three topics to cover starting out with the fact that we have a bunch of new data that shows us SteamOS is growing the Linux user base at a pretty fast rate and that's awesome. Then we got to talk about the latest Steam Deck beta and how many tweaks fixes and features have come along with it. And finally there's a new patch for Elden Ring Night Rain that makes it a lot more playable on the Steam Deck especially if you're solo. Real quick have you guys noticed how many people are calling the Legion Go S a Steam Deck 2? Let's pump the brakes a little bit on that like it's a little bit better in terms of performance if you're playing at 30, you'll get 35 FPS. If you're playing at 40, you'll get 45. If you're playing at 60, you'll get 65. It has marginally better performance. It also doesn't have the track pads and it's not made by Valve, right? Like the, the performance gains are not good enough to call it the Steam Deck 2. And I want them to make a Steam Deck 2. So let's not have them thinking that they can just like have that fill in as the Steam Deck 2, you know? Anyway, all jokes aside, let's get rolling on the video and talk about Linux's exploding growth thanks to the Steam Deck and of course SteamOS. So these numbers are coming directly from Valve. They track the hardware of everyone accessing Steam. I'm pretty sure you have to opt into this, but I'm like 99% certain everyone does because up until now, Valve has been really good about not selling people's data. So there's really no reason not to give them your hardware data so they can track what GPUs, CPUs, and combinations of hardware are accessing Steam because then we get that data later on, which is awesome. So in 2023, 1.47% of people using Steam were on Linux. Now, that's a tiny number, right? Like Windows is probably 90 to 95 percent. Three point something percent of it is probably Mac, and then the last of it is uh, kind of filled out by Linux. But then in 2024, it kind of exploded and went up an entire percent to 2.4 percent, which is a lot of people because there are millions and millions of people on Steam. Now it slowed down a little bit in 2025 since only 2.7 percent of people are on Linux, but you can kind of track that directly against the trajectory of the Steam Deck, right? Like the Steam Deck grew a lot in its first two years and in the third year it sold a lot of units but you know it's aging hardware right it's pc tech that stuff gets upgraded a lot quicker there's tons of news stories all the time complaining about things like anti-cheat complaining about things like the aging apu in the steam deck gassing up things like the legion go s and the z1 extreme even though that's a chip that's over a year old and the z2 extreme is nowhere to be found and the z2 go is like not really better at all than what we have in the steam deck so you know people are probably Probably reading those news stories and assuming that because Valve said the future of hardware is bright at Valve, the Steam Deck 2 is probably right around the corner. I know most people are expecting it in 2027. I think we could potentially see it this year, and if not this year, we'll see it next year. I think it's time for a Steam Deck 2 to line up with the explosion of SteamOS and the full release and everything like that. I think these numbers will be a lot bigger next year because we're getting closer to the full release for everything. I know you can just download it and install it on an AMD PC. I've done it. You can install it on your ROG Ally, your Ally X, your Legion Go Original, either of the Legion Go S's. So the amount of devices that you can install it on has grown. It's just Valve is doing a lot of work to let people know that it's not completely ready, right? Like they're saying you can do this, just don't expect full support or everything to work correctly. So I'd imagine just with how small the user base is and the weird hate campaign against Linux and the Steam Deck in favor of Windows lately, that not many people are going out of their way to get Linux installed on their PC. I think what's really going to grow these numbers is if uh, companies like Lenovo deem something like the Legion Go as a success and then they start shipping desktops, laptops, and everything else with SteamOS variants instead of Windows variants. There's something that not a lot of people are talking about, which is the SteamOS version of the Legion Go S is cheaper than the Windows 11 version. Because while yes, you can go to the store and buy a Legion Go S with a copy of Windows pre-installed on it, they're not eating that cost. They are paying Windows or Microsoft a licensing fee to ship their consoles with Windows on it. I don't know what the licensing deal is with Valve, but it's 
seems like it's either A, a whole lot cheaper than what Windows is charging to ship devices with Windows, or B, it could be completely free to use SteamOS. And I think that would be really smart in terms of being able to grow the ecosystem a lot quicker and spread out the amount of people that are using SteamOS. I feel like I have to acknowledge the fact that it's not 100% because of the Steam Deck and SteamOS. Like it's great. It's more accessible than a lot of Linux distros out there. Of course, there is Bazite as well, and that deserves a fair share of the credit. And I understand that there's a lot of people who have been playing on Linux a lot longer than the Steam Deck was even a thing. Like Linux is not a new thing by any means. But when you have something with the full backing of a company like Valve, the people who make Steam, the people who have made Half-Life and Left 4 Dead and everything, and they can market it and get the mass market appeal that wasn't able to be achieved before because no one was marketing Linux. It was all word of mouth stuff that where you figured out that you could install Linux or you watched Mr. Robot and you were like, what operating system is he using on his computer? You know, it's a big level up in terms of awareness that you get from a company like Valve making a Linux distro or their own flavor of it. I don't really know how to say it. I'm sure someone will correct me. I know I criticize Windows a lot. I don't hate Windows. I don't hate the Xbox experience. I hate the way Windows implements certain things and focuses on bloat and adding in AI features instead of having a fast, fluid operating system that actually works. Like I just saw a tweet the other day that said every time you click the start button, it runs it as an app. It's not natively built into the operating system to be running in the background. So it spikes your CPU every time you click the start button. All those little things add up and make the overall experience slower and Microsoft can kind of sit back and not have to worry about it. But the Legion Go S, we have to say thank you to because we got that direct head-to-head -head comparison between the SteamOS version and the Windows 11 version. And it really laid out everything wrong with Windows in front of us in a really clear and concise way. I mean, it's raw numbers. The Steam OS version of the same hardware runs better than the Windows 11 version of the same hardware. So hopefully, which is what my criticism is trying to result in, Microsoft takes this as an opportunity to actually fix their operating system and make it good for gaming. Like I would love to use the Xbox app. I own a lot of digital Xbox games, but like it makes my PC slower when it's open, which is bad enough. I mean, that's a reason alone for me not to use it, but it also just like has so many issues. You can't use it with a controller reliably, which is insane because it's an Xbox app and the Xbox is a game console that's controlled by a controller. You can't actually find the vast majority of the apps available on the store. Some of them are findable on your C drive. Other ones aren't like Gears of War Ultimate Edition or Forza Horizon 4. So doing anything like using a Moza software or something like that just is like a roll of the dice on if it's going to work or not. And using things like RTSS to limit your frames because you don't get that great overlay from the Steam Deck on Windows, that becomes a massive pain in the butt. And then finally, it just doesn't download games half the time. I started the download of Forza Horizon 4 and it started downloading the game. I got to about 25%. I went out to dinner with my wife. I came back and it was like error, stop downloading because this computer is not authorized. Why did it start downloading the game without checking if my computer was authorized? It's all those little things that are wrong with Windows because of them just adding smaller feature after smaller feature and not focusing on the actual operating system itself that cause it to be a pain in the butt compared to Steam OS, which, you know, has its own issues, but they're totally forgivable because it's new and it's made by far less people. Uh, it's just like a completely better experience across the board. It's built for gaming versus built for everything. It really is that classic phrase, jack of all trades, master of none. Windows is not a master of anything because they're a jack of all trades. They try to make their operating system the new hotness whenever something new comes out. And because of that, it's extra bloated and runs poorly because things are just built on top of itself over and over and over again. Whereas Valve made an operating system to be a master of game quality gaming just gaming across the board. And that's what they are, masters of making an operating system that works for games. I know this will never happen, but I'd love to know if anyone actually converted to Linux from PewDiePie talking about it. I know he's retired, so he's not pulling the same numbers he did five or six years ago when I was watching him every day, but he's still popular. He still gets a lot of views on his videos and the whole tone of the video was like, anyone can do it. So I'd just be curious to see how many people actually were converted to Linux by PewDiePie, because that was a really cool video. 
if you haven't seen it, you should definitely check it out. When I'm recording this video, he actually did like a sequel to it where he traded in his Tesla and missed the dog mode when it would leave the AC on for the dog in the car. So he made a camera with a Raspberry Pi that beams the temperature, humidity, and the image from his car, I guess, to his phone. And it's just really cool how easy this stuff is to get into. But when you look at it on the surface, it feels extremely difficult. So yeah, Linux is growing. It's slowed down a little bit. That lines up with the Steam Deck kind of becoming a piece of aging hardware. I'm sure once we get the Steam Deck 2 or the full release of Steam OS, it'll explode once again even more. Sticking with Steam OS getting better though, there's a new beta out for the Steam client. So like the game mode or like the Steam app that actually improves a lot of bugs that kind of popped up right when they shipped it on the Legion Go S and the ROG Ally and everything. And it, it did cause a little bit of annoyance. So I'm glad they fixed it. If you have seen the same update pop up multiple times, like you go through the restart process, you see the progress bar, you do the second restart, and then you go back to the settings menu and the same update is there and you apply it and nothing happens. Turns out that was a bug. The update did apply correctly the first time, but you know, some bug was in place so that it was showing that you had an update and you could get it to clear by doing it a couple of times, but it's just annoying, especially when you're setting it up on new hardware, especially considering how many people's first experience with Steam OS that is. So that's good that they fixed it this quickly. And then the other thing they updated is going to help desktop users, or if you're using a keyboard on the Steam Deck. So right now, if you want to open up the quick access menu or the Steam menu, like the left side menu, you would click control one or control two for the left and right side respectively. That's a far reach across the keyboard. It's hard to hit with your pinky. And then there's like a floating finger. It's hard to figure out. So they've made it better by making it shift tab or shift control tab, just a little bit closer together on the keyboard. It's customizable though. So you can set your own shortcuts with your mouse or your keyboard or whatever you want to do. That's just a little tip, I guess. If you're using a desktop or a keyboard and you don't know how to get to those menus without hitting the buttons on your Steam Deck while it's docked, which is inelegant, you can just hit shift tab or shift control tab and get the exact menus you're looking for. I like this update because it's focusing more on the desktop side, inching ever closer to, uh, you know, actually being able to fully install SteamOS on desktops. I did see some people saying that if they installed Bazite, they got noticeably better performance than SteamOS. I got to imagine that's just because they've been focusing entirely on handhelds up until now, but seeing how great the performance is in SteamOS on handhelds, I can't imagine that it won't be the same case once we eventually get the SteamOS release for desktops, regardless. Get the beta update if you want it. I've been consistently impressed with the beta. I'm fully on the beta channel. I did it to get the new Mesa drivers and I don't regret the decision. And finally, I talked about Elden Ring Night Rain a couple times here on the channel. I reviewed it in my last video. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. It is so great for the Steam Deck. It's just really hard if you're playing solo. Like I've played a lot of Souls games. I've played all three Dark Souls. I've beaten Demon Souls. I've beaten Bloodborne. I've not beaten Sekiro. I've gotten pretty far in Sekiro and I've gotten pretty far in Elden Ring. So I am pretty good at doing like no hit runs in the original Dark Souls and everything. Even for me, a Souls veteran, someone who sunk hundreds of hours into Souls games, Night Rain is a different beast, man. Like it is extremely hard, especially solo. So the new patch that's out buffs the shit out of everything if you're playing solo, which is great for the Steam Deck because all of the problems I have on my main gaming PC playing on a giant TV are kind of amplified when playing on a small screen. It's just how it is. So either way, if you're playing solo, or on a team of three people, you're going to get more runes for killing monsters in the world like ads and bosses, which is great because you'll level up faster. I've noticed when I play with randoms that if they don't know how to play, it's like totally determines if I'm going to make it to night three or not, because a lot of people will be like level two or three by the time the first night boss happens and you're just not doing anything against a night boss at level two or three. So giving them more runes makes a lot of sense. They'll be able to level up faster. And if they lose a life, you lose a level. And if they don't get their souls back, they might not be able to level up to where they were. So this just makes it a little bit easier to gain levels. Even if you lose one, you also get one revive on night bosses. If you're playing solo now, this is good. I think because, you know, if you're playing with three people, even though the bosses have way more HP, you can revive infinitely. It gets harder because there's three bars that fill up. Like each time you die, it adds a bar and it takes a lot of hits to get someone back up. If they have three bars, unless you're using an alt with iron eye or something like that, but it's still good 
good in solo that you're able to get one revive on a night boss and that resets. So like if you use it on the first night, level up and get to the second night and die, you'll get another revive. So I think they handled that really well. And they also confirmed a lot of stuff is coming to this game this year. I was curious if because it's a spinoff, they were going to do more content, but it seems like they are. They confirmed that they're going to enhance the boss fights. So maybe they'll be like second form boss fights or something, or they'll have more move sets and they'll be like end game versions of the original bosses. They confirmed that more bosses are coming in DLC and more characters. So it looks like they're going to stick with this game at least throughout the rest of the year. But the best thing they confirmed is that you're going to be able to play with two players. I have a lot of friends playing it right now. I've kind of figured out the group I like playing with. So when they're not online, I basically always only have one other person online. I know you can get a mod to play with two people, but then it still gives you three persons worth of health on the bosses. And at that point, you're wasting like 45 minutes beating your head against the wall for way less chances to win. So I think that's a good update on their part. I know this game's not for everyone. I've talked to a few of my friends who haven't played the original Elden Ring, and I'm like, this is the one to try. This is the one that will sell you on the original Elden Ring because it gives you the opportunity to play with end game characters. So you get a taste of what you're going to be able to do if you make it to the like three quarters mark in the original Elden Ring. And once you get that, once you experience that, it just made everything click for me. It's getting me to want to buy merch. Like I want to buy this book that has all the Elden Ring lore. I want to buy gym merch because for some reason there's a ton of Elden Ring gym merch out there. I don't know why that happened, but I feel like it's pretty cool to have a maidenless gym like pump cover. I don't know. I usually wear Lululemon stuff because my wife is a manager there. So she brings me home clothes all the time and I like it, but I would love to have a sick Elden Ring workout shirt. But yeah, man, it's so good. I'm telling you, I looked at my friends list and I saw because I added so many of you guys none of you are playing Elden Ring Night Rain I don't understand how it sells 3.5 million units in the first weekend and not a single person who watches this channel and added me on Steam is playing Elden Ring dude it's like 40 bucks I will play it with you I need more people to play this game to understand how awesome it is and it is really fun on Steam Deck especially with this new patch so yeah I'd give it a shot I did see on Green Man Gaming and other sites I'm not going to mention which ones obviously but you can get it for like 30 bucks which is totally fair. I feel like that's a fair price for a game that's mostly an asset flip doing a new thing, but I've just been having so much fun with this and I hope they do these side projects more where there's like a contained focus on what exactly they want to do with the game because that will help them have new ideas for future games. That's how Rockstar used to work. Like back in the day, you'd play Midnight Club and they were using Midnight Club to figure out the driving mechanics for the open world in GTA games. Like Midnight Club LA had the zoom out map that would show you the map of LA and then you'd zoom in on your car that was made in Midnight Club and then they converted it to GTA 5 along with the driving. Now they just make one big game and then they don't get to figure anything out in between. So I like that From Software is doing this. I think I'm also going to finally play Armored Core 6. I bought it when it came out. I just haven't gotten around to it. I've got the From Software bug for the first time in a long time. So yeah, thanks for letting me gush about Elden Ring so much. I hope you guys grab it and enjoy it as much as I am. Anyway, as always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and shape on.